Welcome to the 2019 Tech Yes Studio Tour. Today we're gonna to go through tip to toe and show you guys everything in the studio, why I use it, and also some of the stuff that I couldn't live without in order to get the videos made as well as doing the hustling. Now, the mediocre stuff, that usually gets hawked, but let's take a look first. Treadmill behind here. Well, I think they call it elliptical rider. Great to do some exercise when you need to do some exercise. And that's one of the things, you gotta stay on top of your game, whether it be hustling or exercise. So that thing is great. Then over in the corner here, we've got the Tech Yes Lounge. I also tend to crash out on this a lot. It's really comfortable. We've got a Tech Yes Loving Pillow. Now, another thing about this case, uh, couch, sorry, true story, I picked it up on a deal at about 25% off. So, you know, you just go into the store and say, hey, would you take a discount? And no asky, no getty, and that's a big part of Tech Yes City. So, right beside that is the LG 55 inch OLED TV. I absolutely love this for watching Netflix and Stan. And then just behind that, we've got the filing cabinet, all that boring business stuff, which you probably don't wanna see, but, Let's move over now to this right here. This is the uh, product shelf, and we've got here RX 570s, a lot of them, and also got a lot of other stuff like uh, some power supplies, RGB lighting down the bottom, and then some random products. And then up the top, a lot of uh, new motherboards, especially X570 motherboards. A lot of those boards have been coming in. And now one thing about the motherboards in particular, uh, a lot of companies like to send us over motherboards to do reviews, but also in ways I feel like kind of a little bit like me looking out for problems. And so when I find these problems, I also report back to them. For instance, on the Meg 570 uh, Ace, I had this weird problem that I found out. It's the Trident Z memory, the 16 gigabyte sticks. In the first two slots, it would work absolutely fine. But then in the outer two slots, it would give out an error message and it wouldn't boot properly. And the problem is you want it in the outer two slots because it's the most optimal. And it'll actually give you an error message coming up when you put it on the inner two slots and it won't work properly. So that's uh, something I found out for them, sent them an email about that. Then we've got this right here, X58 and X79. I absolutely love these two platforms. If you guys have followed us for a while, you know that these motherboards, if you can get them for a really good deal, coupled with a cheap overclockable Xeon, you've got some good price performance on your hands. But another reason why I love these Xeons is because they teach you a lot about the newer stuff. It was like the bridge between legacy and UEFI. These two platforms in general will give you a huge understanding of overclocking, especially old school overclocking, meets modern uh, school overclocking, if that makes any sense. So X58 and X79, once you learn those and master those, you'll be able to overclock anything in my opinion, and you'll be set for glorious PC master race levels that you've never obtained before. But let's move on now with the studio. Let's keep going. We've got here, we recently did these, fix these up, sound barriers. So when you're talking, it bounces off the sound, scatters it, so you don't get that sort of echoey uh, audio in your studio. We recently did those in the studio refresh where behind me, you can see we've also redone that yellow wall and it's nice and popping. So if you guys wanna see that video, I'll put the link up here. But then we got just over here, the whiteboard. This is where I write down things that I have to do. Uh, we can see here we've got the studio tool, we've gotta to get that done. And we've also got the art of the office PC, another video that I'm making. Then after that, I actually have to jet and uh, go overseas but then on the floor here, we've got a pile of, I wouldn't call it rubbish, but this is linked to the office PC. And basically this stuff here, you really can't sell it individually. So you've got to think of something to do. And that's something to do as an office PC. So let's go over here. Camera, this is a slider. I think it's called a shark slider. And then that's attached to a, uh, I even forgot the name of this tripod, but it was one from Japan. It was pretty good value for money. I'll put the link in the description below because I'll have to think of what it is. Then we got the Sony. This is a massive lens. Uh, it's connected to the A6300. This is a full F4 zoom lens. 
And I love this thing because you've just got so much you can do with it. You can do zoom in, zoom out shots. Uh, it's great with slow motion as well. A lot of the B-roll shots you see coming out on the channel, I use this, even though admittedly, haven't used it for a couple of weeks. So let's keep moving now. In there, we've got, <laughs> that's probably the worst part of the studio. That is cold storage, where uh, pretty much stuff that I don't use a whole lot, I'll just chuck in there. There's also a lot of old coolers, old graphics cards, things that just uh, eventually I do see a need for them, but at this point in time, they just don't get used. There's also right at the back in there, some monitor stands as well, because I've wall mounted a lot of my monitors here. Then going through the studio, we've got uh, studio lights. Uh, you always need lighting for doing any sort of work. So we've got quite a few of these. And uh, also on that note, I love filming in daylight. So I'm a big fan of daylight. So you can see it's very open here at the moment and we're actually filming in daylight. So even though I do film at night with uh, lighting, I've got all the lighting there. I do prefer to film in daylight if that sort of makes any sense. And then right besides that, we've got three posters that I just recently hung up. Three of my favorites, uh, episode three, Revenge of the Sith. I don't really care what the haters say. I absolutely loved that Star Wars. Absolutely loved it. It was my favorite of the whole group. So, I mean, episode one and two, yeah, they kind of sucked, but episode three nailed it. And then we got Back to the Future, amazing. V for Vendetta. If you don't know what that movie is, I, don't, I, I can't help you. V for Vendetta was just absolutely epic. And then over here, big table. This is the big table, the workhorse. I picked this up again off Gumtree on a really good deal. This table has honestly been the best table I've used in my life. It is so sturdy, massive thick wood. I just bang things on this, put PCs together. And also on that note, it just keeps going. All I have to do to clean this thing is grab some alcohol wipes, clean it down, and it's good to go. We've also got the soldering iron and some other stuff and the next upcoming video, which is the Art of the Office PC, ready to go right beside that table. Uh, over here, we've got some new products that I've got to take a look at. Uh, I've got no idea ETA when they're coming because I just got them in. And as I said, I got a jet overseas. So that's the table where I put like a lot of the have to do stuff. And then we're moving now into the juicy stuff, the stuff that you probably all came to see, and that's all the enthusiast tech that gets used around here at Tech Yes City. And here we are starting from left to right. We've got the Asus Tor NAS. Uh, that's got four, six terabyte hard drives in it. There's actually an upgrade on the way, even though I don't really need an upgrade. This NAS does everything I need it to. Behind that is a switch that gives internet pretty much to everything from my router, which is upstairs. And that distributes it to every single uh, LAN port in this studio. I've actually got to upgrade that soon to a 10 uh, gigabit solution, which I've really been meaning to do. And then besides that, we have, of course, on top of that, we've got Elijah Craig. I uh, love that stuff, but that's just like one to look at. Then we've got my main rig. This is the big daddy of them all, the beast. I absolutely love this thing. Uh, beforehand, I did use an eight core Xeon. I switched to a 16 core uh, Ryzen CPU as well. And then I tried this, and this one's been one of the longest running main PCs I've used, I think, yet on the channel. I absolutely love it. So it's got the 18 core 7980 XE, and you've got the Asus Deluxe uh, X299 2. It's the Deluxe 2 motherboard. Uh, basically, the story behind how I got my hands on this was I did the review for the 9980 XE, and that was a loan sample. And then they sent the X299 Deluxe 2 motherboard over with that and the 7980XE. And when I was trying it out, I said to uh, Intel, I said, you know, guys, I, I don't care about the 9980XE. I really need to keep this motherboard. I absolutely fell in love with the X299 Deluxe 2. And I don't know if Azus is doing something like that for X399, but they really need to because I started overclocking it to 4.4 gigahertz and then I'm like, wow, okay, this is putting out a lot of heat. And the VRM on this thing was so cool. It just was like getting lukewarm at best for my hand. So they had implemented a monster VRM on this motherboard. And then it's got all this fancy like LE OLED readouts and stuff like that. And it just looks amazing too, that black and white sort of theme that they're going on with this motherboard. 
I absolutely fell in love with it. It's got 10 gigabit uh, LAN on, on board as well. And it's got all the bells and whistles you'd want for a motherboard. Now, of course, it is very expensive. It's one of the most expensive motherboards out there at the moment. But if you want to get like the 7980XE or the 9980XE and put it on this thing, it's going to handle it overclocked. And now with the 7980XE, they actually forgot to ask for that back. So I sent them back the 9980XE and then sure enough, I just kept, I had the 7980XE on hand. And I was like, okay, cool. Let's just delid this thing and start using it in my main rig. And I haven't heard back since. So, you know, I, I think there's a thing called sitters rights. So, hey, even if they wanted it back, <laughs> it ain't going back. And now looking at the other parts in this rig, we've got a two terabyte Samsung uh, Evo NVMe SSD. Really quick, I need that as a scratch disc and as also a main disc for my PC for editing videos. So 4K video editing can get very intense. That's the main purpose of this whole rig is to go into Adobe, 18 cores overclocked and just smash through footage. And trust me when I say, I smash through that footage. This PC does it like no other. And we've got 64 gigabytes of Corsair Dominator 3200 megahertz memory in there. That stuff, I mean, it looks really good. The bling's there, but it also performs really good too. And we've got the 680X, that's the Crystal series. I've actually taken off the front glass because I the uh, reflections were a little bit annoying, but after I did that, the airflow improves a little bit and I think it looks absolutely mint once you do that. Now, cooling the CPU is the H15i RGB Platinum. This uh, and the RAM and the case are pretty much my three favorite products from Corsair. And even though they sponsor me, I wouldn't be using this stuff if I didn't love it in my main rig. So this is the best stuff that I think they produce and I absolutely love it. I mean, it's going right now, 4.4 gigahertz, even though it's idle, it's barely making a peep. So that's how quiet everything is. You've also got the new custom um, RGB light loop fans, which I'm matching to the studio, yellow and black. So that's the whole new theme going on here at Tech Air City. And then for the graphics card, we've got the RTX 2080 Ti. Even though for video editing, you, I found there's no difference between a 1080 Ti and a 2080 Ti. I just liked the uh, Serious Gamer. That's the SG from Galax. Actually really good. Uh, 2080 Ti to get because it comes in with the best power efficiency and it's also a lot cheaper than the other 2080 Ti's out there. So let's move on now with above that, we've got the key lights from Elgato. I recently just got this in uh, Elgato sort of, uh, they said, look, these key lights are absolutely amazing. And taking a look at them so far, they're really nice. You can change between warm and cool daylight colors and you can also dim and make them brighter if you need to. And of course they have a small footprint which I think is why they're sort of setting them up for streamers. Even though the lighting itself is a little bit expensive, you can control it from the computer or a smartphone app if you wish to. Now, besides that is the main setup here. This is where all the magic happens with the monitors. We've got here two 32 inch 4K monitors. They're both color balanced as well. This one here comes color balanced out of the factory. That's the ViewSonic. I took a look at this on the channel as well as this BenQ here. This is 4K and I've also manually calibrated this to make it perfect color match as well. So they're both now calibrated, this one out of the box. This one needs just a slight bit of calibration and they're good to go. Above that is the ASUS PG3500 Hertz 1440p ultra wide. This is where all the gaming gets done on. Well, I recently just put this up and I've only really played a game of Dota 2 on it, but it was a lot of fun, so. <laughs> if that's anything to go by. Then we've got over here, all the boxes above that. Mega Man boxes, spawn action figure. They're probably the two most important things on this shelf. And then of course we've got some CPU boxes and some GPU boxes. And you'll probably notice in the corners, the speakers. This is out of everything in my studio. And I'm gonna emphasize this a lot. My favorite purchase of the whole studio is the Z906 from Logitech. Previously, I had the Z5500 uh, and then I sold that years ago and I got the Z906. And I absolutely love this kit of uh, audio. So basically, it'll set you back, like depends on what time of the season you buy it at. I think I bought it around about 230 US dollars or something like that for a 5.1 setup with optical in and also 3D processing and a remote. It is the best buy that I've done in my life. I enjoy this stuff every single day. This thing turns into like a nightclub if I want it to. 
and for editing videos, it's actually very accurate with the sound. So that's the two things that I love about this sound system. It goes loud, I enjoy my music on it, enjoy games on it, and it's actually pretty accurate for video editing. And you need it to be if you want your viewers to get a balanced experience, whatever headphones they're on. So you wanna be somewhere in the middle and you want that to be accurate. So if they've got really bassy headphones, they'll still hear you. If they've got really high tone uh, headphones, you won't hurt their ears. Then besides that, we've got like a webcam and also an RGB light, uh, which you can turn on and off. It's in, it's in party mode at the moment. So it's just changing between all the lightings. Uh, but behind that is the Intel uh, test bench. This is the 9900K. I clock it to five gigahertz and you only use two sticks of memory generally for testing because you can get that to higher speeds. And that's on the Phantom Gaming X from ASRock. That is a really good board. If you're getting a 9900K and you want pretty much the best board for the 9900K, that would be my pick. Uh, then we've got an AOC 4K monitor over here. I picked this up on a Gumtree bargain for about a hundred bucks, believe it or not. And it's the really good thing about this monitor is it's got display port in, DVI in, VGA in, and DVI in. Wait, no, did I say yeah. HDMI? That's, <laughs> I, said, I said two of them one time. So it's got all four different display ports ins and does a really good job of scaling too. So if you set it to 1440p, it won't look blurry and 1080p. So it's actually a really cool monitor. I'm glad I picked this one up because it's perfect for a benchmark rig. Then below that, we've got keyboards and mice. This is the last part of the test bench. Well, actually underneath that, we've got the AMD test bench as well, but I'm actually doing a motherboard review for the X570 Creator, which is ASRock's uh, latest sort of X570 board with Thunderbolt 3 on board. So it's actually a really exciting board that it's got those features, 10 gigabit LAN. So it's got all the bells and whistles that someone, I guess, on the professional side would need, but they also need more cores, more threads too, to go with that. So that's in the process at the moment. I actually had to take that off because I um, also use this bench over here uh, to put PCs on and install windows and whatnot. If someone needs a PC fixed up, this is sort of the bench to do it on. Now, keyboards and mice, this is actually pretty important for getting work done too. Over on our main setup here, we've got the K08, I think it is, Sound Blaster X keyboard. I've had this for, oh man, it's two and a half years going now. This has been my main keyboard. I absolutely love it. Shallow keys, but also they're not prone to making mistakes. Usually when I use high actuation keyboards, I make a lot of mistakes typing. This one's a different kettle of fish. It's a really good keyboard. Of course, you've got the RGB bling there, which you can customize, but I've also used a um, custom latex wrist rest as well. You can get these off eBay for pretty cheap. This one, I fell in love with it. So really, if you guys are on the computer for a long amount of time, make sure you get the right gear in terms of the right posture, the right chair, the right height. And you can see a lot of people critique me about my monitors being too high. But when I sit down, I'll show you right now. So I'm sitting up straight and my neck and my eyes pretty much matching the middle of the monitor. And that's important. So a lot of people like tend to use their monitors like looking down at them. You're gonna get a lot of headaches if you do that. So don't do that. I mean, I'm just telling you my experience with doing that. But yeah, uh, so this is one of those parts, basically the ergonomics of the setup is something that's underrated and doesn't get talked about a lot. But this keyboard is basically, subjectively, I don't like it the best of the keyboards I've tried. I do like the top ray real force. That is just heaven to type on. But objectively, I type the fastest on this keyboard and I also make the, less, uh, the least amount of mistakes. And it's also got a media key and mute key, which are so important for a keyboard, in my opinion, in 2019 for getting work done, especially if you're using uh, speakers like I'm using here. Then besides that, we've got the G10T from Logitech. This is my main mouse at the moment, uh, but I literally just tried the um, Final Mouse Ultralight 2 with Rocket Jump Ninja, <laughs> and I've been begging him to give me one of his spares. So I'm gonna actually beg him in this video too. Uh, Zai, if you're watching, can you please give me an Ultralight 2? Pretty please, <laughs> pretty please. But uh, there's also the Model O minus as well. So I'm gonna be getting those two in if I can, because they're probably the two uh, fingertip mice to get at the moment. I think they're both really good. Uh, and then I'd like to try both of them for like a month each 
and make up my mind. They're definitely an improvement over this one here, the G102, both of them. So I have tried both of them, but I wanna try both of them for longer. Uh, moving over here now to the uh, test setup, we've got the Corsair Strafe uh, RGB keyboard. This is a really nice keyboard to type on. It's a close second to the Creative K08. I'd say a lot of people would actually prefer this much more than the Creative K08. It definitely feels better to type on, the RGB looks better. And then we've got the Harpoon mouse, which is kind of like a small fingertip palm grippers mouse. If I had to um, pick a mouse out of Corsair's stack that I liked the best, this would easily be it. Uh, some of their bigger mouse, they just don't fit right in my hand. And then underneath that, we've got their mouse pads, which are phenomenal. Uh, they're my main mouse pads for editing and also doing test stuff. But moving along here, we've actually just got this keyboard just in, and it's gonna be my new travel keyboard for now. This is the CK80 from Moto Speed, which if you guys know on AliExpress, there's a lot of different AliExpress sellers selling this stuff. Uh, this one here is really different. It's got optical switches on board, Plus it's got semi-low profile, so not full low profile, but semi-low profile PBT key switches. So you can see there the color's gray because it's hard to get the color right on PBT caps. So you can see that's why they've gone with this whole sort of gunmetal gray silver look because of the PBT switches they've used. And typing on this thing, my first impressions are wow. Like this could be a keyboard that could change the game. I'm just gonna try it out more and then I can give you the verdict because maybe a new contender as a main keyboard, especially with the volume knob and mute feature on the side as well as changing the RGB. So that's interesting. And then we've got this mouse as well. Uh, this is the V100, which has three buttons on the side. And it's more like a medium hand. Uh, you probably get away with a large hand too, palm grippers mouse. So I'm not so much a palm gripper. I do like to play FPS with a palm grip, but if you guys follow us, you know that I'm a fingertip gripper by nature. So really good palm gripping mouse, in my opinion. Feels great, the weight's good, the shape's amazing for right-handers. And uh, the sensor is the Paw 3327 from Pixar, which apparently from what I read up is a sensor that evolved from Logitech to Pixar, then evolved again, then evolved again, and this is what you get. And now moving over to the side of the corner here, we've got some sound tiles and this is where the play button gets done. And that right there is a very special motherboard. That was the first motherboard I pulled out of the $40, is it possible to make a PC for $40? Because that's kind of where Tech Yes City went on the tangent that it went on, all from this motherboard, which ironically the motherboard itself ended up not working, but all the parts other than that did work. So I've hung that up on the wall and I've still, to this day vowed that I will get this motherboard working again one day. And when I do that, it's gonna be a celebration, ladies and gentlemen. But right here, we've got lighting as well. This here is just some two lights that I use to sort of make the place more elegant. Then besides that, we've got the big bad Darth Jar Jar. If you guys uh, saw the feature on this, I did this in collaboration with Ethan from Tag Mods. Uh, we went full, uh, just balls to the walls on this with the custom tubing and also a 980 Ti as well as dual 5690 Xeons on an X58 SR2 from EVGA. So you can overclock dual Xeons on this board. And then of course we've got the Darth Jar Jar theme on the 680T. So pretty cool thing with this whole build was that everything was pretty much used parts. And that's what I liked about it, it was just an icon for the channel and used parts. And now moving over to the last piece of this setup is I guess the streaming setup as well as the uh, backup video editor who's actually filming right now, Yusuf. He likes to edit on this setup. So I've got a second setup here. And also a special thing is you'll notice this is the Yes Mini. It's the travel PC that I use when I go overseas. It's so lightweight. It's got a handle on it, suitcase. We did a video on this thing. Even though it doesn't look spectacular, it is spectacular. It's got a 9900K inside, 32 gigabytes of RAM, ASRock, Z390 Mini ITX motherboard, and you've got an RTX 2060, all packed in to a very small form factor case. And we're using for the power supply, the SF750, which is a platinum rated power supply with a small form factor solution. Now, the good thing about the power supply is with these parts, it actually really doesn't spin the fan up at all too. So it's got more than enough juice to handle what's inside that. And we've even managed to add some RGB bling to it as well. Now, for the monitors, BenQ 24 inch 1080p monitor, hustled this for, I think it was like 30 or $40. Uh, that's attached to a stand. 
And then we've got behind that another key light and that works really well in this setup because we're on a tight space. So it mounts to the desk and you can change the lighting as well as having a backlight. And uh, then we've got here, the main monitor is the BenQ 35 inch uh, ultra wide. And this has an 1800R curvature, really nice monitor, very similar to the PG35. Uh, but I do love the color profile on the PG35. It's called the Cinema Profile. I don't know what Azus did with that profile, but it is absolutely magic for gaming. And I do recommend it. If you've got any Azus monitor, try and look for the Cinema Profile. That'll give you a great gaming experience. Then for mouse pad, we're using the ASRock X399 mouse pad and another Strafe RGB keyboard. And then for the mouse, we've got the G302 MOBA. Uh, which ended up being my main mouse for quite a while after the G3. And uh, it wasn't exactly a success of the shape was a bit different, but then the G102 came out and I reverted back to that. Then we've got uh, the HS70s as well as the Fidelio L2s. Yusuf loved to use headphones, of course. L2s are some of the best headphones you can get out there. They're very underrated. Philips uh, make some phenomenal headphones if you guys haven't tried them. The problem is I don't do any marketing, so no one knows about their headphones really, but if you try them, you'll definitely fall in love with them in my opinion. Now, over here we've got uh, the HyperX Quadcast. This microphone is so good for streaming or doing any sort of uh, live voice work because it's tuned for that. So basically when I edit videos for you guys, I actually have an EQ filter that I pop on my voice to sharpen up the highs and drop the bass a little bit because as we said before, the headphone thing, the warm headphones, if we don't do that, uh, warm headphones, the sound will come out muffled. This thing here has that curve already built in out of the box. So when you're streaming, you're basically gonna get that raw crispy voice to all devices without having to tune it or EQ it on the fly. And another good thing about it is it comes in with its own built-in amp. So you don't need a separate um, audio interface in order to power this. So it's very portable, very lightweight, and the voice work coming out of it's actually pretty impressive. Though, of course, if you're doing voiceovers for documentaries or stuff like that, you may wish to get a warmer microphone. But what I've seen so far for live streaming is it's very impressive. And you can also mute it on the fly too. And it's got the light to let you know that it's on. And then besides that, we've got the last of the pieces of the puzzle here. This is the Stream Deck. And this one is really good to have especially if you need those extra hotkeys that you don't have. So for instance, we can use it to monitor CPU usage from the little icon itself, or we can have uh, mute keys or volume changing keys, which we didn't originally have on our keyboard. And we can also with the Elgato key lights, uh, put the command on the Stream Deck to just quickly turn them on. So if we press the power button, we should then have lighting on our face. We can also change it to warm and cool light as well as make it brighter or not as bright so you can probably see that on camera and it does get very bright if you want it to so that's only off one key light so it's actually a pretty cool handy feature to have but let's conclude this studio tour now with the last pieces of the puzzle and this is the main camera gear here this is the a7s2 and i use the Batis uh, f2 25 mil lens i absolutely love this lens this camera, the ISO, you can do practically anything with this camera shooting 4K, uh, 30 FPS, but the ISO can go up to like 100,000. So you don't have to worry about light with this camera, as opposed to my previous camera, which was the G7, I had to worry about the ISO levels, even going above 800, I'd get noise. This thing really doesn't get much noise in it, even if you go up to like 10,000 ISO. Insanely good camera for shooting with uh, the Batis prime lens as well. I tend to just stick with this lens for a lot of the stuff I do. Uh, for instance, the main shots, I'll get the just the normal standard 25 mil, but then for slow-mo, it'll automatically zoom it in. So you can get a bit of both out of this lens. It's got such a nice look to it as well. And the contrast and colors come out really well. So the tripod below that is a very special thing. I picked this up on a bargain hunt from Japan. I actually love this tripod in, due to the nature of it. It's lightweight, it's very quickly and easy to change things, the height, and it's very easy to carry with me too. So that's the reason I go for like these weird Japanese hard off uh, thrifty tripods is because not only are they cheap and I love a good bargain, but function wise and feature wise, it's such a good tripod. And then the last camera in the stack 
is the FDR AX700. This is what we're filming uh, this uh, studio tour off. This is a one inch sensor and it's got 1000 FPS as well as having f2.8. It's actually a vlog cam kind of thing, but it's actually more of an expensive vlog cam. And it's a, probably my favorite piece in this whole uh, studio in terms of filming, even above that of the A7S II because of how handy it is and how long the battery life lasts. Now at nighttime, it does get a little bit noisy due to the one inch sensor, but in terms of versatility, the voice work, you can just plug a laugh straight into this and it's gonna give you exceptional voice quality. So that's what we're doing right now. And you don't have to do too much in post to get that audio sounding right, as well as it having just on the fly zoom. So you can zoom into my face really quickly if you want to, zoom out on the fly. And of course it's got image stabilization built in, all that good jazz. And then we're moving on now to the last important piece, and that is the chairs. We recently fixed up two of these chairs and they came out of the fold, then they came back into the fold. And this one here is the eBay ergonomic chair. I really like this one. And then I've got this as well, the X3, and then the Corsair racing chair, because I need three chairs around here, one for the video editor, one for myself, and one for a guest. And in terms of using all these three chairs, I don't really have too much of a preference when it comes to chairs. Uh, they all are pretty comfortable once you get past a certain price range. I'd say for ergonomics, um, this one that the eBay chair might be the best in terms of it's just got that nice, you know, comfortable thing going with it. But that being said, it just depends on how tall you are and your posture. So any three of these chairs could be the right chair for you. Of course, people are telling me about Herman Miller's and how good they are. So I'm very curious to try one of those, but who knows? Chairs is definitely one thing that I've got to focus on more. But with that said, I hope you guys enjoyed the 2019 Tech Yes Studio Tour. If there's any things that you think I'm missing out on and I need in this studio, then let us know in the comments section below, but also let us know what you think of this studio. Are you guys digging it? If you are, then be sure to hit that like button. And the question of the day comes from g for gamer He says, some info on A320 overclocking stuff, 1400 at 3.9 gigahertz. How safe is it? Uh, with overclocking on A320 motherboards, yeah, you gotta be very careful. You guys have been hounding me to do an A320 overclocking tutorial. So what I'm gonna try and do is round up a heap of A320 boards that can actually do overclocking and then I'll tell you which ones will do a decent job at it and which ones you should avoid. Now, obviously whacking in like a Ryzen 5 1600 and then trying to get the most out of it on A320 is probably not going to happen just in terms of that balance and how you correlate things in the tech yes brain. But like a four core eight threaded CPU like we did in that video, 3.9 gigahertz should be okay. And of course the latest Zen 2 six core, the Ryzen 5 3600 with PBO2 enabled is fine as well. So there's kind of like that threshold for A320s and that's about it. The older four cores or the newer six core with PBO2. That'd be my recommendation so far, but I will start looking into getting in a heap of A320 motherboards and see what we can do for you guys. And that is it. We are wrapping up the 2019 Tech Yes Studio Tour. I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.